Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve number of one bits. This is actually another blind 75 problem and we've been tracking all blind 75 problems on this spreadsheet. The link to that will be in the description. Today we'll be doing number of one bits, one of the last problems remaining that we haven't done. And I also have a YouTube playlist for the blind 75 solutions. Link to that will also be in the description if you do want to take a look. Okay, so now let's get into it. We are told to write a function that takes in an unsigned integer, which isn't really important for this problem because all we want to do is count the number of one bits that it has. So the concept is pretty simple. So when you take a look at this number, we can see it's made up of zeros and ones and we just want to count how many ones it has. Clearly it has one, two, three, so we can return three. But how can we actually count the bits? So obviously we need to do a little bit of bit manipulation. I'm going to be showing you two different solutions. One of the solutions, the second one is going to be slightly faster if you're interested in it. And it's pretty difficult to come up with, but the uh, first solution is a little bit more straightforward and is more doable. So like I said, the easiest way is just to count manually bit by bit and then see which one of them are ones and then increment our total and then return the total. But let's see how we can actually accomplish that. So how do we know? Let's say we want to look at the first a bit on the right side. How do we know if it's a one or a zero? Well, there's actually two different ways. One way is you can and it with the integer one. So since the integer one just has a one here and then the rest of them are zeros, when we do a logic and operation, logic and is basically taking the and of every bit, but we know that every bit is going to be zero when we take the logic and. It's going to be zero for every bit except for this one, which can either be zero or one. It'll be one if the bit in the input integer is one, then we'll get a one in the output. If it's a zero over here, then we'll get a zero in the output. So that can tell us uh, if there's a one here or a zero here. Uh, another way to do it is just to mod this by two. Modding is basically taking this, dividing it by two and getting the remainder. Since this is the ones place, if we mod it by two and there is a one here, we'll get a one in the output. If there's a zero here, we'll get a zero in the output. So we have two different ways to do it. I think I'm going to stick with modding, but you can do it either way. Okay, so we have a way to detect if the first bit is a one or a zero, but what if we want to look at the next bit and the next bit and the next bit? How do we do that? Well, the easiest way would just be to take all the rest of the bits and then shift them to the right by one. And luckily, most languages can natively support this, and it's a very efficient CPU operation. This is kind of the preferred way to usually do it in bit manipulation, just shift every bit to the right by one. Uh, we can achieve basically the exact same thing by taking this and then integer division by two. Dividing it by two will basically shift all the bits to the right by one as well but usually the bit shift operation is a little bit more efficient on your CPU, so that's what I'm gonna prefer. So basically we're gonna take these, shift them to the right. So now we're gonna have a new integer, 101. Uh, again, we wanna know if this bit is one or zero. We're gonna mod it by two. We're gonna get another one. So, so far we have counted two, uh, two ones. And again, we would wanna take these, shift them to the right. This time we get a one zero. We mod this by two, we get a zero in the output. That means there's a zero here. So we don't add to our total this time. And lastly, we take this, shift it by one. We get another, we basically get the integer one. We mod it by two. One divided by two, the remainder after that is just one. So we got our third one. So our total so far is three ones that we counted. And lastly, we're going to take this and then shift it to the right. But what exactly is going to be remaining after we do that? Well, basically zero. And once we have a zero, it basically means we have all zeros, right? 32 bit integer will have 32 zeros. And that basically means that we can stop our algorithm now and we're done. So we counted in total three ones and that's what we can return. So once you're familiar with these bit operations, it's a pretty straightforward problem. So let's code up the first solution. Okay, so now let's code it up. I'm gonna declare one variable for the result, which is basically the total count, the total number of ones that we're gonna have. And I'm gonna continue uh, counting the ones while n is greater than zero, or in other words, while it's not equal to zero, which I can you know, do just like this. And that'll work in most languages, I think. And 
then we want to know if the one's place is a one or a zero. So we can take n and mod it by two. Now this will either be a one or this will be a zero. If it's a one, then we want to increment result. If it's a zero, we don't want to increment result. So in other words, we can just basically add this to our result itself. And then we don't want to forget to shift everything to the right by one. So what we can do is set n equal to itself, bit shifted to the right by one. After that, the last thing we have to do is just return the result. So now let's run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see, it does work and it is pretty efficient. But what exactly is the time complexity of this solution? Well, the good thing is that we're guaranteed that every input is going to be a 32-bit integer. So we know that that while loop we had is going to run 32 times. So really, the time complexity is big O of 32, which is constant time, right? No matter what the input is, the time complexity is not going to scale up. So basically, the time complexity is constant. We can say it's big O of 1. And there's no real extra memory complexity needed as well. So it's also big O of 1. But a small downside of our solution is it has to count, it has to look at every bit, even the ones that aren't ones. So for example, what if we had a number like this? In this case, we're gonna look at this bit first. Okay, it's a one. We're done with that. Then we're gonna look at this bit, this bit, this bit, this bit, every bit here, even though they're zeros, right? That kind of wastes time. Wouldn't it be convenient if we only had to look at the bits that were one, That meaning our algorithm only has to run as many times as how many ones are actually in the input? And yes, there actually is a way we can do this, but it's not very easy to come up with. And it's probably not even worth coming up with because the time complexity will be the same. It'll still be constant time and constant space. But it might be good to just, you know, get really good at your bit manipulation tricks and stuff. And maybe you'll see this in an interview. So the main operation we're going to be doing in our while loop with this trick is basically taking n and setting it equal to n logic anded with n minus 1. And this is what we're going to do in every iteration of the loop. And each time we do that, we're going to increment our result by 1. But the question is, why does this work? First, let's see what will happen. So. Okay, so what's going to happen? Let's take this integer and subtract 1 from it, right? That's what we're going to do over here. So n minus 1, which is going to be this. And now we're going to logic and them together. What are we going to get when we do that? We're basically going to be removing this, right? This, we're going to get n minus 1 itself. And we're also going to increment our result by 1 now, regardless of what the output happens to be. Okay, so now our n value is going to be set to this. Okay, so now our new value is going to be 100 zero, zero, and all zeros. Okay, now we're going to take this number and subtract 1 from it. What What is that going to look like in binary? Well, it's going to be 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, and now we are going to logic and these two together. What's that going to look like? Well, we're logic anding every bit. This one is going to turn into zero now. And the rest of these are also going to be zero. Even though we have ones in the bottom number, we have all zeros in the number above. So now we're actually done with our entire loop. Now we have all zeros. We incremented our result by two. So now our result is 2, and then we return, right? Which makes sense, because when you look at the original number we started with, it, yes, it did have two ones in it. But how did this algorithm work? Well, it's actually really simple, but it's definitely not easy to come up with. What we're doing when we're subtracting 1 from itself is we're basically getting rid of a bit, right? When we took this number and subtracted 1 from it, we got rid of this 1 bit, right? And remember, we're counting 1 bits. So when we did that, we increment our result by 1. But then, why did we logic and it together with itself? Well, basically, since the rest of the numbers stayed the same and, you know, we took this 1 away here and then we logic and them together we're basically removing that one bit so then when we when we logic anded these two together you can see that the one bit was removed but the rest of the number stayed the exact same on the left okay that works but what about this number right then we were left with this and then we subtracted one from it then what did we do well again when we subtracted one from it we basically got rid of the, the next one bit 
right? You can see that when we subtracted one from it, this is what the number looked like. We got rid of this one bit, but we introduced a bunch of other one bits, but these are all okay because we know they're going to be and any one bits that we introduce are going to be on the right side. And we know that if we just deleted this one, it was the it was the rightmost one bit that we had. So any ones that are introduced to the right side won't matter in this number. This is n minus one, by the way. Any ones here won't matter because remember, every time we do that, we're logic anding them together. We're logic anding n with n minus 1. So these are all going to cancel out and this is going to cancel out as well, the position where we you know, remove the one bit. So basically what we're doing here is we're skipping all the zeros in between. We're basically allowing ourselves to run the loop as many times as, as, as basically as many one bits exist in the input integer. It's kind of a really weird trick, but it definitely works and it makes sense why it works. Now we can code it up and it's pretty simple. So you can see that this was our original solution and we only have to modify this a little bit. So what we're gonna do is get rid of this line and instead of incrementing our result by n mod two, we're actually gonna increment our result by one each time because each time we increment this, we are going to be setting n equal to n anded with n minus one. So we're gonna be counting the number of one bits exactly. And this line can actually be slightly shortened uh, by doing this in most languages. And yeah, so this is about as efficient as we can get. We won't run any extra iterations of this loop when we have zeros. So let's run it to make sure that it works. And you can see, yes, on the left side it works. Yeah, the runtime is about the same because it's still the same exact big O time complexity. But I hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.